Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review and comparison, a small review and comparison, and a general introduction video to carbide rotary burrs, or known as rotary files, as well as counterbore, I should say countersink tools, as, and hole deburring tools. So we kind of, I'm kind of including both of them in the same review just to help fill it out. And because they're, even though they're not really the same type of tool, they're both similar and I should say similar in size and although you wouldn't use these for grinding operations you use these for knocking burrs off the edge of holes or putting a chamfer in so one of those uh, screw with a taper on the back side can sit flat you can also do the same operation with the, the burrs and so kind of an eclectic mashup anyway this is just to introduce the common types such as these these are the style of, of deburring or countersink tools that you would find in a hardware store and they make different sizes we got a stanley here uh an old american made uh, u.s general u.s general which is unfortunate uh that harbor freight also has a brand called general and i always used to get them confused but the actual u.s uh, or general tools company is uh, a pretty decent tool company they've been around for a long time and they actually still make quite a few uh products in the united states so don't be fooled when you see the general tools with has the black and yellow kind of labels. They're really not too bad. And that's all these tools are. They're just they're pretty common and they're just for when you drill a hole so you can knock off the burrs off the edges. And they just have different sizes of them. Harbor Freight also has tools like this. And I tend to get these in the higher quality because the Harbor Freight ones seem to wear out super fast. The only real Harbor Freight uh, countersink or deburring tools are these little guys and I actually like these because they fit in you know quarter inch hex and uh, what's interesting about these is they're they're very well supported as you can see they just have a continuous surface and then they drill a hole through them and then the sharp edge that's left from the the hole is actually what performs the deburring what I like about these is that they can run both clockwise and counterclockwise so when you wear out one edge you can just run them backwards and you have another cutting edge and they come in three different sizes and once again I've always really liked these just because when you put them in the hole they just have a real nice supported area and they always seem to work pretty darn well also the any little chips and debris actually goes into the hole so they uh, really do perform well it's surprising and then we have a couple of uh, nice cobalt high-speed steel uh, deburring tools I like these because they're only three flute and they still have very wide surfaces for uh, uh, good support and these are made by if I can find it here You can barely even read it in this camera here. These are Magafor. These are French and uh, they're pretty nice 82 degree uh, countersinks, but I use them for deburring purposes and uh, The Magafor are really good quality definitely excellent quality. I have one half inch bit here now This is a solid carbide bit this is actually for uh, corner, not corner rounding, but for putting a chamfering tool. That's what it is. It's really for milling machines, machine shop work, CNC machines, where this bit is exactly at 90 degrees. This is exactly 90 degrees between these two surfaces. And so it goes along an edge and puts a four, if we, this camera would focus, and puts a 45 degree uh, chamfer on any edge. I've used it occasionally for deburring just because it is so sharp but You have to be super careful because it's very easy to damage these The other time that I've used this is when I wanted to do a countersink But not at 82 degrees like these are that's the standard but the, at 90 degrees And so this is also handy for that and just wanted to show that you aren't limited to 82 degrees You can do 90 degrees and various others So here we have what are the carbide rotary files? Now, they're called rotary files because that's essentially how they work. Let's get these all up in my hand here. We'll first get the first, the primary type, which are ones that are, they have two different types. I have ones that are for more aggressive removal and ones that are, are standard. And that's what these are. They come in all sorts of shapes, essentially kind of like die grinder grinding stones. Except for these have steel shanks and then they have a braised solid carbide. So these work really well on like steels and uh, other hard materials. I've always been a little hit and miss because I've used them on things like a cast iron. And cast iron actually has a lot of very hard pockets in it due to its high carbon content. Even though overall a cast iron piece can be like thrown on the ground and break. There's actually many pockets where the carbon is just right. 
where it makes very hard uh, little carbides and other very hard spots. And so these rotary files I generally don't recommend on cast iron because cast iron tends to beat them up. And the issue with that is, is with all the hardness that you get from carbide, uh, it is brittle. But if you're working on mild steel, brasses, those types of materials, these work great. They don't work so great on aluminum because they clog up super easy. But on steels, uh, like mild steel, they really are pretty good and they can uh, have a very aggressive removal rate. And that's really why you use them as, as compared to a stone. Uh, these really can work very fast. And so we have, you know, all, what's a, all sorts of different shapes. We have like a little pencil style one right here. That's a quarter inch. These are all quarter inch shank, but you can get them in eighth inch shank to use with Dremel tools. Here's one that has extremely coarse teeth. This one is for just super fast removal rates, pretty aggressive. This one can all can also be pretty dangerous because if you're not uh, really holding onto the tool well, it'll just contact the surface and then kick it right back. And then of course we have small little spike ones like this. I don't use these very often, but I did pick these all up because it was a going out of business sale. And these types of rotary files down here can be 10, 20, 30, even $40. They can be real expensive. So I kind of have an odd selection just because it was a industrial supply that was closing their doors. And so they were selling these bad boys for, I think it was like $8 a piece. And so I had to pick them up. Lastly, we have a different style, which is exactly the same as these, except for what we can see is that they have double cuts in them. So they have the standard channels, just like these do, and then they have this additional cut. So it makes, up, makes it have a whole bunch of teeth, and these are just the very same as these, except for they leave a little rougher finish and have an increased removal rate. Generally speaking, I kind of stick with this style, but I did want to point out that if these aren't working, you know, aren't removing material fast enough, you can get ones with a more aggressive cut. Now, of course, the reason why these bits are so expensive is that's a solid piece of carbide, so these have to be diamond ground, and you can see all the grinding work that goes into one of these bits. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of grinding in one of these, and so that just, and because it all has to be uh, using diamond grinding wheels, it makes these kinds of bits quite expensive so really most homeowners or i shouldn't say homeowners but do-it-yourselfers weekend warriors may only want one or two for a specific project but as far as building up a collection the only place you'd really see them is some kind of welding shop or manufacturing shop where they actually need to use these all the time where i've seen them used most in welding shops is when they're torch cutting stuff they'll use these just to clean up the surface real fast and then get to their welding operation Anyway, this was just a quick video just kind of talking about and showing a few different styles of rotary files and rotary burrs as well as chamfering and countersink tools, which can also be used for deburring operations. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.